So this week, this week's uh, legal legal conundrum is travel. I'm reading this out. If you're listening to this on Deluxe Radio, or seventy thousand of you, your rights with a delayed flight, lost luggage, and can you change a name on a flight t- ticket? What you need to know, ladies and gentlemen, the mighty legal brain that is Patty <laughs> Savari. Thank you once again for that lovely intro. Can I just say um, mm. that just to start the show, um, R.I.P. Paul O'Grady. Oh yeah, we 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 mentioned we covered that the front end of the yes. show. Yes, so and I, I were just wanted about. to quickly say that because I I've watched I grew up watching Paul O'Grady and and what a sad and sudden loss. But yes, today it's what are your rights? To, it's a loss to us. But as I always say, I really would. I'd rather go this afternoon and just drop dead. And have some ghastly lingering illness and make yes. my family, especially my kids. I always say that. I, I just honestly, I'd rather get hit by yeah, a bus than finish. I get it. I, I totally bear, I get it. it. I, I can't bear it. Um, yeah. Where's he gone? Come yes. back, Neil. Stop so around. N- Neil, Neil's extraordinary today. He's he's. I there, don't know. He's in and, and out like there. a fiddler's he's bloody elbow. He is. I don't know. Um, you got you got to watch me today, Hattie. And if you'd like your jingle, let me know at any time. I'll do your jingle. I love it. I've actually done oh. a TikTok just on that oh, clip dear for you. God, you oh, top, did you oh, send top it to him, Russell? Did you send it to me? Kenton should do it. Kenton I, I Hall. Don't have, I've got to get your diary email because I sent it to Russ and said, send it on to Neil. So send me an email and then I'll ping it over to you. But it was a great jingle. I will. Ha- Hattie, so, sorry to butt in. Um, I'm, no. I'm with a friend today and he heard I was talking. To, I told him what show I was on and he heard I was talking to a legal eagle and he's given me two questions to ask you. So I don't know, if, but they pro- will probably help other people. But if I can slip those in before the end, that'd be great. Yeah, lovely. OK, just flag me up when we're near the end and we'll, we'll have a chat about that. So I want to talk Thank about you, your rights. You're welcome. Your rights with a delayed, cancelled or rescheduled flight, what you can claim for for lost luggage and how. And can you make a name change on a flight ticket? So statistically, and you know, I love, I love a bit of statistics. The UK is the second worst country in Europe for flight delays and cancellations. What a surprise. Yes. And every day. We get the Jubilee two- line right. <laughs> and every day, over 210,000 passengers land or depart in the UK. So lots of people, as we know, go and come from where we are. But lots of people don't know where we stand with all this stuff. So I'm going to start with the easiest. Well, lost or delayed luggage. Key points, OK? When luggage is lost, delayed or damaged, airlines are liable for your losses. However, compensation will depend on the value of what you've lost. And the maximum compensation is a thousand pounds. Unless before you board your flight and at the point of when you're checking in your luggage, you say, I have something worth more than a thousand pounds in my luggage. And here's the proof of that. Will the airline take responsibility for covering it if it gets lost or damaged they will usually say well thank you very much for letting us know some airlines will say well maybe perhaps and they'll go and call managers in and scurry around but most will probably say did you get travel insurance and so, does your travel Patty, insurance Patty, know? what what do you you, you got to go a re- show them a receipt what do you got to show them well you're standing I don't know. in the if queue you've got, you've got valuable... 50, people behind you everyone's <laughs> in a bad mood and you say oh by the way i've got a fabergé egg worth half a million quid well, um, yeah, yes. Work? Well, if you've got something that you have to transport from, you know, take with you and you have got a receipt or proof or valuation of it or something, you know, it, it you could show it. But I would say to you, have that chat with your insurer, your travel insurance before you go to make sure that anything over a thousand pounds in your luggage will be covered for your journey. Now, if your luggage has been lost, most airlines will re- reimburse you for bare essentials, such as, you know, toiletries, underwear, and laundry costs. If you have to, you got to the other side and it's not home, it's your, you know, holiday or work destination and you haven't got your luggage. So, but make sure you keep receipts and they, and they are under an obligation to refund you, reimburse you for the bare essentials. But If your luggage has gone missing, you must report the issue before you leave the airport. Oh, okay. Because if you don't and you leave without your luggage and you go home or go wherever and you think, well, I'll just call it in, 
they are not going to accept a lost luggage report because you can imagine you shouldn't even be leaving without your luggage or you sh- you know if your luggage isn't turned up it should be a problem okay. and you need to complete what is known as a property irregularity report i know it's it's really not a very interesting term but it is what know. it is ask them to give you a copy of that because that's your proof that you've reported that your luggage has not turned up and at where that do you point. Go? The, 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 one of the things, I, I, I just, you know, I'm a belt and braces guy. You're standing by the wretched carousel. You're waiting for your bag. It doesn't turn up. You, you think you're going to be violently sick because you've got everything in it. And you've got a holiday plan or a business it. plan. Or you're going to give a speech and you've got your suit in there. I mean, you know, there's a million and one. You've got your mm. medicines in there, your pharmaceuticals, whatever. So now you're in a panic. Where do you go to do all it- this legal stuff? Every airport will have a customer services desk, every airport. And and they are usually, and I've seen them in every airport in the UK, lost luggage. It's actually a banner on top that says lost luggage. So just go, go. if not, just ask, where can I go to report lost luggage? The most important thing for you to remember is do it before you depart. Keep a copy of your property irregularity report. If you're in the UK, if you're abroad, get them to give you something, just even if it's, a written note signed and dated to say this person has reported their luggage hasn't turned up. Now, right. if your luggage does not turn up, you mm. must contact the airline within seven days of when you came back. OK, if you don't follow these steps, yep. they will not be obligated to compensate you for your lost luggage. So report it at the airport before you depart. Contact the airline again within seven days. Getting travel insurance, and I've I've mentioned this already, is really important. And checking what it covers, because you could have a thousand pound excess on it, and your belongings might not even amount. It's pointless. Then it's absolutely pointless if you've got a thousand pound excess. But exactly. Trouble with this. The trouble with this is Hattie, uh, my pal, one of my very best pals, Ray Gelato, travels all the time with his band, Ray Gelato and the Giants. And not long ago, towards the end of last year, they lost everything. He was doing a European oh tour, gosh. and the saxophones went missing. The trumpets oh went my missing. Gosh. The stage clothes went missing. Did they it ever turn up? Some of it. Some of it turned up. Okay. Um, the airlines were as unhelpful, I'm not going to mention the names, as difficult and as disinterested as you could possibly imagine. It was an absolute nightmare that for Ray nightmare. Gelato to get his some of his stuff back. That's expensive and you can imagine, stuff, that's I all imagine. The, that's all the stage suits. Some of those instruments are, you know, nearly 100 years old, so they've got the correct sound and patina. It was awful. But there was no, there was no help. There was no consideration. They didn't give a monkey's. Oh Kenton, you travel, presumably. Do you have problems losing stuff? Oh, no, we've lost his sound. Kenton, you got to unmute. No, can't, can't hear you. All right, you fiddle around with the sound. But let, let me with, just with, say with, one with, thing here. Yeah. Home contents insurance policies could very well cover your luggage. Yep. Most people don't know that. <clears throat> yep. So it's worth checking if you didn't have travel insurance and your luggage has been lost or you've had to buy other items to, in order to get by because your luggage didn't turn up on time. Check with your if you've got home contents insurance, check your policy and again, check the excess on the policy just to make sure you're not claiming for a 200 pounds and your excess is going to be 350 pounds because yep. then you, you're yep. not going to get anything. You're not going to get sod all. Delayed or cancelled flights, what are your rights? Okay, key points on rescheduled flights. If your flight has been rescheduled, you're entitled to a full refund. Wow. So if the airline says any part of your flight, either your departure, going out or coming in, has been rescheduled, for example, you're not going, it happened to us last week, you're not going out at 5 p.m., you're going to go out at 3 a.m., you're entitled to a full refund on those tickets. Wow. Delayed flights. If your flight was leaving, can or... I just? Can I just? I really want you to under, underline that point because you get there. They say, well, you know, you're there for a six o'clock in the evening flight. Let's say to LA or something. I don't know. And they say, well, sorry, it's not going on till three. You don't want to sit in that airport for nine hours. I mean, you can you go around the bend, right? There's only so many weather spoons you can visit. 
you can get all your money back, right? You, I just want to make really well, clear. Well, let, let's this. just let's just clarify this. If you've already done the first leg of your journey, so you've gone out, you're at your destination, and they've said, right, you're going to fly um, eight hours later now. We've just had to reschedule. You are entitled to a refund on that element of your flight because you've okay. already flown out, but you're coming back. But if right. you haven't flown out to your destination yet, yeah. and they're changing a part of your journey, i.e., you're going out or you're coming back and you haven't done any part of the journey yet, you're entitled to a full refund because th that is not what you paid for and contractually bought. Okay. All right. Okay. Delayed flight. If yeah. your flight was leaving or arriving in the UK and it doesn't matter which airline, the airline has to give you two hours. If they've been delayed for two hours or more food and drink, right. if you be delayed for three hours or more, access to phone calls and emails. If you've been delayed overnight, they have to give you accommodation local to the airport and they have to transport you to and from the um, accommodation. But here's the key point here, okay, and this is going to be probably argued, well, sometimes it probably can be. If the airline doesn't give you any of the above for your two-hour mm. or three-hour or overnight delay. Keep receipts, make a claim. But delays must be down to the airline and not as, as a result of bad weather or something out of the airline's control. For example, strikes, airport oh. strikes. If the delays are down to a result of really bad weather, then compensation it can be argued on behalf of the airline so just bear that in mind if your flight is cancelled the airline has to legally give you a full refund for the flight and any other onward flights that you may not be able to use if you're halfway through a journey then the airline has to give you a free flight back to where you came from um, and you could also claim compensation if your flight was cancelled less than 14 days before your departure so package holidays again same this applies. is in from uh, this is in from new york city what about if i want to reschedule says elizabeth green i had a ba flight three weeks of calling eventually they said i can change it for two thousand pounds that's nice of them it was booked through them yes unfortunately mm. when you buy it it is a little bit unfair the way this whole thing works right because when you as your, uh, the, the lady just said, if you turn up and say, I want to make changes, oh, there's going to be a cost. And I'm going to come on to that with the name change. Okay, doke. So I am going to also give you, because you mentioned your friends who'd lost lots and lots of stuff. There yeah, are all some their stage suits and very helpful websites um, that do and would go through the whole claim for you. All you And you, you literally just put the flight number and yeah. the date of travel. And you can go back and claim for up to three years ago. Wow. On anything that you may be due a, some money back for or compensation for. And they will look at whether you're due anything. Quite interesting. I didn't know they existed until I started to do the research. Okay. So there's lots of laws that cover us. Um, delays and cancellations. There's something called a, without boring you with it, the UK 261 regulation. There's laws on baggage. There's laws um, of baggage. Um, the Montreal Convention, no, this is, this 1999. Neil, is, that's Neil um, coming through the speaker, so we'll take him off. Package travel, package holiday, package tour regulations, Act 92. That's the boring stuff. That's the bits of the law. Okay. So very quickly, hmm. can you change your name on a flight ticket? It's one of hmm. my most watched videos on TikTok because people want to know, can you? Because you get such a hard line from so many airlines, it makes you think that, no, that cannot be done. And it's happened to me in the past where I thought, do you know, I can't go to that trip, but I know somebody that can. So the headline on can you change a name on a flight ticket is that, I mean, airlines will typically tell you the reason for, that tickets are non-transferable is for security purposes. But the truth is, from a legal perspective, you can absolutely change your name on a flight ticket because there is no law that states that you can't. Okay, so that's the headline. Right. Okay. I'm a little lost here. There's no law that says you cannot change your name on a flight ticket. What's really happening is that the airlines want to control their revenue. And making changes think? to tickets has administrative costs. 
bullshit. So airlines will say that any change will depend on whether the ticket has been issued or not. So I'm sure people have heard that. Some airlines will allow it for a fee. Some airlines won't allow anything. For example, BA. BA will not allow a name the most on a ticket. They are, they, they are not known for their helpfulness. I must be honest with you. Uh, I have to say, trying to get help on any uh, customer services desk on the phone or online in the last, I think, what, two years has been a nightmare. I think well, they don't they're not care. running. My... <laughs> no, they don't you just can't, you, you, can't even, you can't even get through. No, um, of course not. This is where it all falls down. You've got the law, which you're stating very... I'm going to try Neil one more time. Only in as much, Neil, I know you can hear me, but your sound is coming through and it's an echo and it's it's ain't working properly. So we're going to try. We're going to try one more time. And then I'm going to give up. Well, so, um, so um, no, testing one, two. No, 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 no. no, no okay. It wasn't working. doing Sorry, that Neil. earlier, was it? No, it's not. But now he's, he's uh, no, no, let's, let's not take that. I mean, I'm Neil now. You are Neil, but you know, <laughs> there's a cost for that. Neil. If you are Neil, there is a cost because you've changed the name. On oh, yeah, so the admin cost. The men's on, radio uh, station <laughs> daily show. So I'm afraid there's no administrative the change, cost. So that means you owe me the admin costs, I think. Yes, <laughs> yes, we owe you several thousand pounds, and Elizabeth Green has agreed to pay it. Thank you, Elizabeth. Right, That's good, very sweet. good. Contact her in Manhattan. So let me just walk you myself through this, uh, Hattie. I've got a ticket in my name, uh, Russell Kane, and I'm flying to New York. And then I decide, no, I'm going to get Kenton is going to go, my new best pal, and Kenton Hall is going to go. So all I want to do is change the name on the ticket that I paid for, for several thousand pounds, presumably, uh, from Russell Kane to Kenton Hall. Walk us through how that works. Well, the airline will, the airline will either say, you can't make a name change, mm. or they'll say, you can make a name change, but at a cost. And as one of our listeners earlier put up, um, they wanted £2,000 from her to make a change to uh, her ticket. I think she was trying to change something else about it. Um, it's interesting because, as I said, there is no law, and they make you feel that there is a law, security purposes, security reasons. Well, that's not the law, is it? The law doesn't say if you've booked a flight, then there's no way you can go back and make a name change to that. Um, it's all to do with revenue control on behalf of the airlines. It's administratively, it's a nightmare for them. Um, and they they just won't, you know, some airlines refuse to do it. And some airlines will say, well, OK, but there there is a fee. But the headline here is most people that... You know, as I said, the airlines almost make you feel that there is a law that says you can't. When the moment they say security and and all of this stuff, do you think, oh God, you know, of course I can't change my name on a flight? Um, but but that's really the, the the headline with it. But in relation to some free help and advice, and particularly with compensation for delayed, cancelled flights, there's two websites. There's one particular website I'm going to give you on that. Um, and then there's a second website as well where there's lots of useful information. So to get free help and advice, there's www.airhelp.com. And I thought, that was help help dot dot com. Com. I thought that was really easy. So I thought I'll just say that one out. And then in terms of information on anything else to do with airline travel, um, you can go to caa.co.uk, which is the Civil Civil Aviation Authority's website. They are. So, you know, they all want our business. They all say they're, uh, thank you very much, Liz. So I'm trying to... And we're the greatest airline. And for some, and some reason, I don't know what's going on, the whole system is slow, and I don't know. It's driving me absolutely. Don't insane. worry about it. Some I'm days really it's sorry. Just like I can't that. do banners, so Liz, I can't help. And and Neil, Liz is saying, put yourself on mute unless you're talking, because we all what's happening is we're getting a delayed soundtrack, and we don't want that. So as much as I'm trying to put the banners up and be helpful, I mean, I just can't. So why is it these airlines all want our business, all tell us they're wonderful, spend millions on advertising and treat us mm. like garbage? 
I have to agree with you. I mean, we've had our own experiences. I've had my own personal experiences where I've just thought this can't be right. Um, a friend of mine was calling a very well-known airline, I won't say who, only a few days ago, and she screenshotted um, the place she was in the queue because she did it via online, and she was 188 in the queue. And Jeez. that was customer services of one of the top 10 airlines in the UK that fly wow. globally. And when she sent that to us, I just thought, you are kidding me. And she was only trying to get through to them because they changed the time of the flight from 5 p.m. to 3 a.m. Wow. And that just wasn't going to work. I mean, there's a massive difference between, as you know, between flying in, you know, in the afternoon during your waking hours than going in the dead of the night. Um, so yeah. that, that was shocking. But you're right. I do think they need to up their customer services on this, but I and, and it is a nightmare to try and get through to actually say I've got a complaint. So I did find, and one of the websites I read out earlier, the airhelp.com, I did find that really helpful because I thought that's interesting because they will do all the work for you if you're due any compensation or money back, and they can go back three years. So if you had a bad experience last year or the year before, wow. You could, you know, they will they will do all the legwork. In fact, the law states that you could go back six years to make a claim from a cancelled flight, delayed flight, lost items Jeez. from an airline. So that's interesting in itself. But there you are, a little bit of help wow. on that topic. I think I the think bottom the line is, is get insurance. Yes, sorry. I think the thing is, is that they've got a sober barrel. Any other form of transport, there's an alternative. If, you know, if you're not happy with the taxi companies in your way, you can buy a car, you can walk, you can get on a bike. But with planes, you have, you know, you're not going to, unless we get slingshots really sorted out, uh, then, <laughs> you know, we just start doling out helicopters to everyone. They're like, if you want to go in the sky, you want to go in the magic sky <laughs> thing, you got to pay us the money. Yes, uh, because that's that's the only alternative. They've conquered the skies. It's a monopoly of the skies from the airlines, and I think we need to see to that. Some kind of personalized jetpacks, I think, is the only well, that, way forward. The CAA, the Civil Aviation Authority, is supposed to be their governing body. Um, you know, I had to issue a claim against a top, again, another top 10 airline myself because they refused a refund on flights that didn't take place. And, on what you know, grounds? On what grounds did they? Uh, um, they said you can have vouchers, and that's another they very want good vouchers. point. You I want, said you're you not my bank. Back. I don't need to keep my money with you. I'd like it back. Thank you very much. And they said no, we'll only issue vouchers, and and that's another thing. You don't have to accept vouchers when airlines issue you. You know, if they give you that story. And imagine I can issue an online cl online claim in about fifteen minutes. Wow! Because I know my way around it, but most yes. people can't. And most people won't even know they could do that. And they wouldn't even know what to put when issuing an online claim. But this was a, a top 10 world, you know, world-known, renowned airline telling me that. The moment I issued the claim, oh, they had the check in the post together with the court fee that it cost me to issue. Straight away they settled. It's pathetic. Maybe I should it's do a show it's on pathetic that on how to issue a claim. It's absolutely. It's pathetic and it's infuriating. It is. Because it is. And they work on the basis that you're going to go away because it's exhausting and you don't know what you're doing. I'm not being rude, but, you know, it's a new area. You know what you're doing. But the rest of us mere punters don't know what we're doing and they think we'll go away. Yeah. And that's how they work out their, their, their revenue stream. It's shocking. It really is But shocking. this is why we do get legally speaking on men's radio station Russ to give Precisely. people little tokens of key information that they can just park somewhere they can actually whether your listeners know or don't know I'm not sure but on the get legally speaking website I have every show that we've done on there so if they ever want to refresh their memory about what we spoke yeah. about the information we gave the websites we quoted for help and free advice because I always try and look at where can people go for free to get help they can click onto our website forward slash radio. It's all there and they can see it, it once again. Absolutely excellent. It, it is good. Wow. So the, the, one of the things that does, you know, when you travel, you're very stressed. And I, I would imagine, Kenton, you travel a hell of a lot. I haven't been away for five years. But 
you know, when you travel, it's, I find it a very stressful. I hate airports. I find the whole thing really makes me very tense. And of course, when something bad happens, you're not in a, the right headspace to deal with it. Plus, there's normally a huge queue. And if it's in Britain, everybody's tutting behind you. And if it's in North America, they're probably getting out a Glock 9 to make their point. So you're under a lot of pressure and you don't think that you can take up the time of the airline employee to mm. make your, you know, do your thing. No, I get it. Yeah. I'm going to no, read I this out it. because I, my system is really playing up today. I'm so sorry. Julie Voice, who was in Houston, Texas, is now in Guildford, <laughs> twinned with Houston. Uh, to be fair, I fly between the US and UK every few weeks with BA, and the service has always been great. I change flights all the time and never had a problem. Good. All right, we've got a few minutes. Liz, can you put up the questions from Neil's friend? Because Neil's had Neil's gone. His internet's failed. What a show today.